All right. Um, So welcome back to another episode of Sober Yoga Girl. I am so excited for this particular episode. Um, I have someone who is a little bit famous on TikTok, in my opinion, (laughs) Um, Annie Robert, and she is a uh, Canadian mom who is also alcohol-free. So hi, Annie. Hi. Thank you you so much for coming on. I'm good. How are you? I'm really, really good. I'm excited, super nervous, but we're good. (laughs) So I have to tell you, when I first got TikTok, which was in October, I'm very new to TikTok. I like didn't know how it worked at all. And um, you were like the first person that came up on my For You page or like one of the first people. So you're one of the first people I ever followed on TikTok. And I remember like seeing you were Canadian and just like finding your videos so funny. And I followed you. And so I was following you for a while. And then I think it was around... Christmas. So maybe two months later when you first shared that you were sober and I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) she's like even cooler than I thought. So, so yeah, that's kind of how I got to know you. No. Yeah. My video started, well, I joined TikTok in April with a big glass of wine and in every video I was drinking wine. It was the thing in August, well, I gave up my big glass of wine and I started, you don't start talking about it right away because you're never sure, you know, how it's going to play out or if you're going to go back to the big glass of wine, but I didn't. And I, so then I started sharing about November, December about, you know, being alcohol free and, and people really connected to me through that. So I'm sharing a little bit more and more about it, you know, also. So there you go. That's amazing. Okay. Wait, I can't believe you got TikTok in April. That blows my mind. How many followers do you have now? Yeah, I have, uh, I like to say a little over a quarter of a million, but (laughs) yeah, uh, 266K. That is wild. (laughs) That's really cool. And yesterday I hit like the 5 million mark in likes. So it's like in your head, you're like 5 million times people pressed on that little heart, you know? So it's, yeah, it's cool. That's wild. What is that like? I'm sure when you got TikTok, that was never, uh, or did you imagine? No, because I did it uh, because my sister put me up to it once because she made a TikTok when we were all quarantined in March, April, and we're all bored out of our mind. So people were, you know, were just texting and she's like, look, I did a TikTok. I'm like, you suck. It's horrible. She's like, you try and do one. I'm like, okay, but it took a week, you know, because I was busy even in quarantine and I did one and then I got hooked. And then TikTok just went and then it just, I blew up and I don't know, like, it just took a big proportion and my, my account just like blew up. And then that, yeah, yeah, the rest is history. (laughs) That's amazing. What was your first viral video? My first viral video was right here in my kitchen. Uh, I was, um, I had my big glass of wine again and it was uh, attention all family uh, tonight. I'm not cooking or you're, you're, and yeah, that one blew up. That went viral. I've had several that went viral and was my personal content that I made. So that was super cool. The one that I did with my daughter in the car when I'm telling her how, what to say to the bully. Oh, I've seen that. That I think that was the first one I saw actually. I I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and we just did it on the way to school and I'm like, oh, I have an idea. Gracie, you want to do this? And she's like okay and she practiced it once we pulled over to the side of the road we did it and then it just whoo it blew up like crazy that was actually that was definitely the one the first one I saw because I thought it was so funny and then and that was when I followed you (laughs) and that was so me that's why I was super proud of it that it did go viral because it wasn't somebody else's content it was mine and I honestly do tell my kids to do that (laughs) so yeah so it was perfect so I was super proud of that one Yeah. yeah That's amazing. Um, and I also have seen that one of you with the wine glass, actually the attention, um, the attention one, I think you might've reposted it recently. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, everybody got, and when you repost, when you're on TikTok, you're like, oh, you started drinking again. And I'm like, no, <laughs> and people watch you. So you have to be very, very careful about, cause then people are relating to you because you're not drinking anymore. And if right. I post an old video with me with a glass of wine, <gasps> they come for me. And I'm like, no. Don't so, worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me a bit more about yourself. Um, like maybe where you're from, um, sort of what you well, do. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm a mom, right? Yeah. Um, I'm from Montreal. I'm native. 
I'm Mohawk, so I was raised on the North Shore of Montreal in uh, Kenesatage, wow. and uh, now I moved with my husband. We're more up north, and um, I've been married for 10 years with my husband for 15. When I met him, he had uh, two daughters, Kiki and Shani, and they were three and two, wow. and now they're almost. Um, 19, 17. So they're big girls now. So I've always raised them as, as mine, super close to them. And I have the minis. I have uh, Gracie and Emma. So we have four daughters. So I'm very busy, very, yeah. very busy. Yeah, yeah. But um, I work also, I work in um, fruit and vegetable industry, industry, and I'm a photographer and I'm starting my own clothing line slowly, but surely we're getting there. So yeah. Pretty That's amazing. Time. Wow. You wear so many hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I work out. That's my new thing. Since I don't drink anymore, I really put all my energy in that and my kids and, you know, just bettering myself. That's not a word. Yeah. But just <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about, you mentioned that you stopped drinking in, um, when did you stop? August? Yeah. August 16th, when my daughter left for college. I re- and it wasn't a plan. It wasn't a thing. I just cooked all day for her because I was making all her food for her apartment. And I was uber sad because we were very close. And I was like, oh, my God, she's leaving. And I always thought I would throw a party. You know, when your kids leave, you're like, yes, li- yes, laundry. One's out of the house. I always thought I would have been that parent. But I got really, really sad. And something, I don't know what clicked. But I'm like, I just... I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. And she was always there pretty much. She had my back on everything. Let's say if I would drink or she always took care of the little ones. And I'm like, I don't have that. She was my safety net. She was the one that was always, you know, patching up what I couldn't do. And I'm like, I'm, I'm losing that. And I'm like, I can't, I have to be on the ball. So I just woke up the next morning and I was at the lake house and I packed everything up in record time, put the kids in the car. I'm like, we're going home summer is over. And, uh, I just, uh, I just quit. Wow. Just like that. And it was just kind of like, it wasn't something it you was planned. Planning. It was just, it wasn't planned. Yeah. And it was like, you'll never last because I would drink all the time. I was the, um, asshole that when you would come to my house and be like, you have to drink, you can't, if you don't drink, we can't be friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I was that person and, um, yeah. And now I'm this person. So mm-hmm. and it's, it's weird. Because nobody would ever, ever thought that even my husband is like, I, I can't even believe you don't drink anymore. He, even him, sometimes he's like, in the beginning, he's like, this will never last. And here we yeah. are. And it did. You know, so. I think I'm similar to you in that regard. Like I was the kind of life of the party, always hosting parties, wine in the fridge, beer. And um, it as well for me was kind of an overnight thing. Like it wasn't ever like stopping or starting. It was just like, okay, I'm done. I'm ripping the bandaid off. Um, So I can totally relate to that. Yeah, because we host a lot. Like I cook a lot. So I always have everybody over. And this summer is going to be a challenge for me. (laughs) I'm like, because... We, we're always at the lake and we have fun and we have friends and uh, it's, it's no, all my friends are alcoholics. <laughs> like, oh my God. So how are we going to, how am I going to navigate through this? But I, I, I'm feeling very strong and I'm not, it's just going to be in, you have to adapt, right? Cause yeah, I don't know. It's going to be transitional. It's going to be special. Yeah. Like I, I remember we, we spoke uh, for the first time when uh, I was away, remember New Year's Eve, mm-hmm. Christmas, and I was like, I'm so stressed. And it went super well. It, yeah. I just focused on my kids and I focused on other things and it went surprisingly well. But for sure, when I, I, I see myself, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do that. Like when I can't really, and people without being mean, or I think it's just like what I was doing as well, telling people, oh, you have to drink when you come to my house. I wasn't trying to be mean or an asshole about it, but my friends do that as well. They're like, oh, come on, have a drink. We're so much more fun. And it, so it's hard. Totally. It's like, I don't know what it is. It's something in our culture um, about like, I don't know, we think that you would need to have fun to drink. And it's almost like, I don't know, we're just habituated to be this way. Like, as you say, like, they're not trying to be mean. It's just kind of, um, I don't know. I know. It's like, are. if you don't have a drink <laughs> in your head. And I, and my sister too, as well as sober now, she, uh, today is her one year and a half. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yes. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and we always talk about it because how people get so uneasy 
around us. And we always yeah. bring our wine without alcohol. So just because it makes, we have a glass in our hand and I don't know, it makes them feel better to see us with something in our hands, which is not water or whatever. I, I pimp mine up. I put a lemon in my water. I put ice. It looks like vodka, right? they like, it's just the same difference. Exactly. And um, I don't know. It's just the hardest thing to my sobriety has been people around me. It's been the people and not me because on the daily, I'm good. I'm strong. I'm feeling bad. Like I'm feeling amazing, but it's to see people's reaction and what people to say to you. It doesn't make me feel like I, that I need to drink, but it's just like, it's, it's fucking annoying. That's, that's what it is. You know, it's, yeah. there's no other word. That's what it is. That's what it is. The social dynamics, I think are the hardest part. And I see that a lot as a sober coach. It's like people, um, what really they struggle with is like how they're going to tell their friends, how they're going to tell their family, how they're going to go to social occasions. Like, you know, you're talking about like the first vacation, the first summer, you know, all of these firsts and, and just kind of like navigating that. Yeah. I think it, like, like we do, we do it to one, like one social event at a time, you know, not to overthink yeah. it. But, and it's like, it's one day at a time, but yeah, it's all those things that put, that I'm always, I know I'll be fine, but it does stress me a little bit, but I know I'll be fine. But it's just like being a little bit of anxiety of what, what are people not about me. It's I mean, I have anxiety about what people are going to, how they're going to react, you know, more or less. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so tell me a bit more about how you um, started drinking and sort of what influenced your drinking habits over time. Um, when I met my husband, I had never had wine in my life. <laughs> I had my first glass of wine when I went for dinner with him the first time. And then from there, it was a glass here, a glass there. And then maybe after my first child, I think my kids influenced my drinking. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's every, th- every time you have a hard day, every time you have this, it was a glass of wine, a glass of wine, a glass of wine. And it ended up, you know, just accumulating it since I would drink, it would be okay for me to drink here, drink there. And, you know, Oh, I've already had a glass there. I have another one here, you know, so the, the glass is just accumulated, which accumulated to bottles. Like in a day I, I would drink like uh, for sure a bottle. Sometimes I'd open another one and I finish it with grappa shots. Uh, you know, if I had a bad day, I didn't have a bottle of wine. I would, I would drink grappa for, you know, I'd get home, I'd be cooking. And it was just, uh, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't fun anymore. It wasn't for pleasure. You know what I mean? Like it was just because I needed it. It wasn't, Oh, let's have, it's fun. Let's have a glass. Let's enjoy it. It was like, I need it for, to come down from something. Mm-hmm. Totally. Or help me navigate that moment that, but I had a lot of moments. So I had a lot of, I had a lot of glasses. That's the thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So now I talk a lot with my husband, I'm like, I can't have a drink. So we're going to, we're going to talk this out right now. <laughs> I don't know what to do with all this emotion. And I remember we had a fight like shortly after I stopped and automatically I remember I'm in my truck and I go to, to, to call somebody on my phone to say, let's go for lunch. And I'm like, I don't want to go for lunch. Cause if I go for lunch, I can't drink because automatically I, I caught myself. Um, I'm going to go for lunch. I know it's been twice. And I, no worries. <laughs> I'm going for lunch and I would have had a glass of wine, a bottle of wine, came home and not cared about whatever went on and just throw it under the rug as I usually do. And, but then I, I call them back. I'm like, Hey, you know what? We're going to, we're going to have a conversation here right now because my day is going to be awful if we don't, cause I'm going to have to, I have all this and I, we, I don't want to stay with all of this. I'm mad. I'm sad or whatever, but usually I would have just drowned it. And mm-hmm. that's when I really got caught on to what, not that I, I kind of knew, but it was very clear that that's what I would always do. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you don't even notice it at the time. Um, like I know when I was going through it, I didn't even realize that it was that coping strategy. Um, and it's really once you take a step back from it that you sort of realize. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that, that particular moment, I really realized I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. So that's what I've been doing. So I'm like, it's all your fault. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So So, 
You mentioned um, kind of when you had your kids uh, drinking sort of increased. I was wondering if you could kind of talk a little bit about like the culture around mommies and drinking wine. And is that something that you've noticed? Oh, I was the CEO of mom (laughs) drinking wine. Oh, yeah, (laughs) totally. (laughs) And um, I, I still think it's, you know, it's okay because we're as a mom, you're so stressed, you're tired and you do need you do need to come down and you do need something fun in your day. And wine does do that. It is fun. I'm not going to say it isn't. And I'm not going to say I don't miss it. And I'm not going to say I don't, I don't miss having chit chats with my girlfriend after having a glass of wine. And, you know, you just like your crap of the day. And, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it is fun. And a lot of, yeah, it, the, 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 I get the whole mom and wine thing. Cause I've done it. I've done it. And I, I think you have, a lot of people, if they need that, I, I'm all for it. If you don't exaggerate or if you exaggerate, like I did, I, I, I have no judgment because I've done it. And I've, you know, I think it's like, a if you have to go through that and if it makes you feel better and if you're able to, to manage to get out of there, well, you know, it's, it's, a, I don't know. I just don't want to have any judgment on that because I yeah. totally relate to that. And even my friends, like, let's say they'll come over Like I don't drink anymore, but I will pour you your glass of wine. If you need a glass of wine, like uh, this mm-hmm. week I was having a conversation with a friend and um, she was having a re- well on um, tax and she's like, Oh my God. And she was, she was in a bad place. And she's like, I am not quitting drinking this week. And I, I just wanted to text her. Like you would feel so much better if you did, but I'm yeah. like, I'm not going to be that, that person. I'm like, no, not this week because I know she's not in that mood. You know, you can never, so I don't want to become that friend that doesn't drink anymore. And that's super annoying. And like, you should stop drinking. I'm not that if you want to drink, Hey, I'll be there. I'll still be your buddy. And I'll, I'll open your bottle because I get that. So it's hard to, is it good? Is it not good if you do it intelligently? But I do get that you, when you're a mom, you do want that glass of wine. Cause I've had many, 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 and they did help at the time. Yeah. They did. Yeah. And I love that. Um, because I think it's so easy sometimes when people quit drinking to go into like this preaching mode of like teaching others. And I love that about you, that you're just so like non-judgmental to everyone else's kind of choices and journey and experiences. Yeah. That's what it is. The good word is everybody it's their journey, you know, and I had mine and if they, you know, if they need to get drunk and if I, if you need to vomit, I'll hold your hand, you know, if that's because we, we've all been there and it, it's, you know, and like, I mean, I'm here right now, they're there and we all have to respect as much as they respect my, where I am now, you're there now, all good. It's not like, oh, I got oh, sober and I don't want to be your friend anymore because I'm not there. Oh no, I've been there. And if you're there, well, you know, we'll be there together, but in my way and in your way. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So what are the main benefits that you've felt or experienced since you've been alcohol free? Well, I sleep better. I'm more, my energy level is way better. Um, the confidence and the clarity, the clarity on everything, uh, all the aspects of my life, you know, it's, it just brings you all around better. And I've tried to explain it to people as well. It's just like, everything is better and everything. I don't, I don't know why it's, I, it's just brought a confidence into me as well, because when you quit drinking and you're, you're, you're thriving through it and you're getting, you know, there's this confidence that builds up inside. You're like, I'm doing it because you know how hard it was. I know how hard it was for me to give up drinking. So I'm like, Hey, I'm bad. Yeah. So that the energy, the confidence it's, it's through the roots. So I just feel all around like a new person and I feel really good. So just that is, is a reward in itself, you know? And yeah. I, yeah. And you said that you got really into like exercising. Was that new since you quit alcohol or? No, I've always been, uh, I've always trained, but not, uh, I've never been as consistent. And, you know, like when you're drinking, oh, don't train, train, you know, you're not, no, no consistency really. So I just like upped my game. So pretty much. That's all. That's that amazing. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. As well. It was like, once I quit drinking, that was when I became like a spinning teacher and a bar teacher. And it just all kind of, I don't know, maybe it was like, I was, I was looking for somewhere to like kind of maybe cope or 
I don't know, a, a way place to kind of spend my time and energy. I'm not sure, but um, I can totally relate to that. Yeah, for sure. I put all my energy. My husband's like, you're exaggerating. You're like, you should slow down. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm do- I know like I'm going overboard with this whole thing, but it's keeping me sane and yeah. happy. And let's just leave it at that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, just leave- let me go with this. Exactly. It's a way healthier habit. <laughs> Do you remember when I used to get drunk, eh? And I'm like, you don't want that right now, right? Yeah. Like, you just be happy right now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, so I know we talked a little bit about the beginning at the beginning about being a TikTok celebrity. Um, I was wondering what are the best and the worst things about that? The best and the worst things. People are are, are horrible at times. But really, like, I I haven't experienced the worst part of it yet because a lot of people get a lot of bad comments. I get shitty comments too sometimes, but not as, I I don't know if it's because I don't, like, put as much energy into the bad comments as other people on TikTok. Uh, There was a bad one this weekend that just got me, like, upset. Somebody said I was way more entertaining when I was, uh, when I was drinking and it just made me so upset. Yeah. Yeah. If you say that to me, which I, I'm fine with not drinking, and I, your comment, it's like if you say that to somebody else on TikTok, let's say it's the equivalent that 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 quit drinking, that's you know not as secure or is like you know you could just push them off the edge, right? It's like oh, you're not 100%. funny, you're not funny if they're insecure about it. It's the equivalent of telling somebody with an eating disorder that they they were prettier when they were thinner and sick, you know, to me. So I just got like I got upset. That's the only one that I really got upset about in almost a year on TikTok. But um, besides that, I have fun with it on the daily. I just I just take all the positive from it, really. I don't, uh, I think it's my kids that get more upset with the, the crappy comments. And well, I'm going to answer that. I'm like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not. But um, yeah, we have fun with it. And I think um, all in like, in general, uh, people like respond really well to my videos and I get a lot of support. And I'm just having fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, what would you, um, what messages would you like to send to, um, your kids or other young people about drinking and alcohol? It would be if it's not fun anymore, or if you need it, or if you start thinking about it during the day and you're like, you're planning and you're in a hurry to drink that glass, maybe you should just, you know, wonder, you know, if it's still just for fun, you know, if that, that's the thing that I would be in my car during the day and I'd be like, Oh, I'm going to start drinking when I get home. And you know, you're looking forward to it. If it's, if you need it, then you should start questioning. It just should be for fun. Yeah. And if you need it, then you should probably question, you know, is this still a good thing for me or not? You know, cause it's, it's super easy to go down and just like, it escalates quickly. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. It, it. Drinking is supposed to be for fun. And if it's something you need to have fun as well, you know, maybe not the best of things. That's what I tell my daughters, you know, we're fun, even though when I don't drink and I, they think I'm much better since I don't drink. So I'm like, I think that's a perfect example uh, for them, for my daughters as to see that, I can say no. And they see all my friends giving me pressure too. It's peer pressure. And they're like, you're awesome. And you say no all the time. I'm like, yeah, because if I can't say no to my friends and I'm going to be 36 years old, how can I tell you to say no to your friends when you go to a party if I can't even do it myself? You know, Mm -hmm. so so they're like, yeah, that's true. Because they're always like, don't do as your friends do, you know, be your own person. And if I can't say no to my friends, you know, like often I'm like, my husband will go, will go somewhere. He's like, you know, I can't say no to this person. I'm like, what is that? We're done. You know? So I'm like, come on. The, the pressure on adults to drink is just ridiculous. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So kids, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed I to love be that. Actually, when you talked about, I think I've seen some TikTok videos where your kids have said how much how happy they are when you don't drink. Um, and that's so, it's so nice to see, like, you know, I, I realize after I ask you that question that, you know, kids really sort of watch our actions more than anything. And it's like, you, you don't even really have to tell them. They just see it in you. They see you role modeling this like healthy and happy, positive life. And that must be so inspiring. That is the most rewarding thing in this whole process has been my kids. And like when, 
when somebody asks them, I'm like listening and they're like, she's amazing. She's quit drinking and she's so strong. We can't even believe it. So I'm like, oh, so they like, they're super proud of me. So when your kids are proud of you, that's like, it's amazing. So that just keeps me going. Cause in the beginning, my oldest one, she would be like, you're going out tonight. Are you going to be okay? Like, yeah, I'm going to be fine. Are you sure? And she was like a mom. I'm like, yeah, I'd come home because she would be babysitting the minis. You okay? I'm like, yeah, I didn't drink. Okay, good, 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 good. So yeah, they're on the ball with me. Yeah. That's so cute. That's so nice that they, that they're like fully in support of it. Oh yeah. They're funny and they're, they're just amazing. That's my main goal is not to disappoint them for real. That's yeah. and myself, but yeah. It's amazing. Um, okay. What advice would you give to someone who wants to quit uh, drinking? Be very prepared. Be very prepared <laughs> because people ask me this all the time. And I know it's different for everybody because everybody has different lifestyles. My, my lifestyle is usually when we're not in a global pandemic is a lot of socializing a lot. It's restaurants, it's friends, it's dinners, it's uh, cocktails, it's uh, you name it. So it's to be, if you're not ready to go in those events, you, you like just take time for yourself and listen to yourself. If you do not feel secure going there, you don't go. That's why, like I said, I packed up my, the, the lake and I left. Because I knew I couldn't do that in that moment. I couldn't face all those people putting pressure on me because I probably would have cracked. And I, you know, so I, the best thing is to be prepared. And if you need to take a step back from people, take that step back because you're bettering yourself. You're doing this for you. And it's hard. It is super, 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 super hard because you're going to want to drink because you're going to want to miss it. Then you're going to have people bugging you to do it, like judging you and, with that some some are not nice and some are just doing it without knowing that it's annoying but there's so many aspects when you quit drinking that can like annoy you because you're annoyed already because you quit drinking and it's hard so it's to be prepared be very very prepared and take it one day at a time and I think the the thing that helped me the most because people were like how how much time are you stopping for and like I don't know I'm like I'm maybe drinking an hour I'll maybe drink in a year and I'll never, maybe never drink again. Cause you know, the pressure of saying I'll, I'll never drink again is something that I didn't want to, I couldn't. So I don't know if I ever drink again. I don't know, but I know right now it's not for me. And I know right now that I cannot do it intelligently. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to, so maybe one day I'll be in a place and I'll with myself that I'll know that I can do it intelligently and, you know, but maybe I'll never be in that place. I don't know. But the, to me was not saying never again yeah. helps me a lot. Yeah. It was day and night for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think I can totally relate to that too. When I quit, it was like, okay, 28 days. Okay. 90 days. Okay. A year. Okay. Forever. You know, because the, the idea of forever is just so daunting to begin oh, with. Yeah. yeah just the words you're like, Oh my God. And then you don't want to fail. And you're like, never again. It's just the pressure of saying never again. And it's a lot of pressure to say that. So just not saying that I think was key for me and just saying, you know what, maybe I'll drink it an hour. You can't judge me because I I don't know when I'll be ready. So that, that took off so much, pretty much that. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Honestly, I'm like slightly a bit starstruck. Like it's so cool to meet someone that you've been like watching through your screen for so long. (laughs) Oh God. (laughs) So, um, (laughs) and I will put in the, um, episode link, uh, your TikTok handle and your Instagram handle so that my followers can check you out um, and see what I'm uh, talking about with all the funny, cute videos. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you. This was so nice. It's nice to meet you too. And have an awesome day. Enjoy your Tim Hortons. And, I shall. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you, sweet. Bye-bye. Thank you, Annie. Bye. Bye.